Good afternoon church, happy Good Friday. I'm so glad that you are tuning here with us today and I welcome each one of you. What a joyous day to celebrate Good Friday from the comfort of our own rooms. I am so excited that we get to do this and it is an opportunity to come together and worship Him online. As we continue to worship, I want to remind us from the scripture John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. I believe that we know that we are so loved and out of that place, I want to encourage all of us to enter into His presence in singing and in worship as Pam and Vic will lead us into worship today. It is going to be an amazing worship as we remind ourselves that He alone, that Jesus alone is the throne of our hearts. Hi, a blessed Good Friday to everyone. Let's just take a moment to turn to scripture together. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 and 5. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Let's just remember him together. Okay. 
to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, and all together worthy, all together wonderful to
Thank you, worship team, for leading us into worship. And now may I ask Brother Aloy to lead us into giving. Hi, everybody. This is Aloy. And uh, today I'm here to encourage you about giving and about living to the fullest. I give thanks to God, our Father, for His goodness, for His faithfulness, and I can never thank Him enough for what He has done for me, for my family, and for ZCFD, and all the families connected to ZCFD. So we give praise and we give thanks to His holy name. Let's look into the scriptures and uh, understand what sacrificial giving is. Today the Lord is putting on my heart to share about the Macedonian form of giving. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 5. We want you to know brothers about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia for in a severe test of affliction their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. So here we can see that the Macedonians gave sacrificially and were secure in the Lord Jesus Christ than in their own plans or in the world system. Their faith was strong and their faith was secure in Jesus. Let us be encouraged today and follow their example of being secure in Jesus of being generous and giving above and beyond what is naturally possible. Through faith, mighty things have been achieved in the past, in the present, and many more greater things will be achieved in the future. And this portion is really so encouraging that even during times of affliction, they had an abundance of joy. And even in the extreme poverty that these precious believers went through, they were overflowing with generosity. It's such a wonderful portion of scripture. And so today I pray that each and every one of us is strengthened by the Spirit of the Living God to keep our eyes on Him, to be secure in Him in every way and to give what we need to give as He leads us. It could be time, it could be resources, it could be money, it could be giftings, but we give, we love and we build each other up as we build up the church for God's greater glory. Let us look to God in prayer and commit our hearts and our minds once again to Him and also lay down our burdens, even the burdens of unforgiveness and bitterness that we might have carried for a long time. For it's time to give those burdens and receive the goodness, the healing and the wondrous riches of Christ which are so much more valuable than those painful burdens. And let's also pray for those who can't give, who are feeling hopeless, who are feeling at the end of their rope and who are sick. Also let's remember our precious sister Pusa who is sick and uh, continue to declare healing and love and strength into her life, the dunamis power of God. And also, let us be grateful for everyone who has sown into our life during this time of need. We give praise and we give glory to God. 
thank you jesus for this time thank you jesus for all that you given us and we are able to give because you gave and you given us abundant life lord we submit all our prayer needs and every request spoken and unspoken at your feet have your way lord jesus have your way amen Thank you, Brother Aloy, for leading us into giving. And now we have Pastor Jason, who will bring us the Word of God. Hello, this here the church. Good to be back again. I uh, wish you a blessed Good Friday to every one of you. So today I want to bring a short message based on John chapter 19, verse 28 to 30. So the title of our message is Appreciation of Christ's Accomplishment. Let's look, let's look to God in short prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, the greatest day uh, in the history of uh, the whole universe. Uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for our salvation. Uh, bless us as we meditate on your precious word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, most of the Good Friday messages that we are hearing focused on what Jesus went through in his sufferings, uh, trying to bring salvation for us. Uh, today's message, I want to focus on the benefits of the sufferings of Christ. So I was wondering what should I uh, focus on in my today's message. Uh, I was thinking this and that. Why, why meditate? Why not meditate on suffering of Christ? Why on the benefit? Seems like uh, avoiding suffering and just thinking of benefits only. That kind of feeling I had also. But I feel uh, this. This uh, I feel that uh, God, our Father, will be pleased with this focus, and I feel that there is not much messages on the appreciation of Christ's accomplishment, and so I felt that I should uh, focus on today's message. So before going into our topic. I want to share a few thoughts on the suffering of Christ. So, uh, these are the thoughts that was passing through my mind as I was preparing today's message. The first point is uh, the point about Jesus being forsaken by his Father, God, Godfather. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, my question was, did God really forsake Jesus? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. This is not uh, just a subjective perception of Jesus. It was a fact. It was a reality. So, when I was thinking about this, I started to think, when, when did God start? When, when did God forsake his son? When did he start? Definitely not just on the cross. It's not just a matter of one hour forsaking him. It's not. Actually, uh, God forsaking Jesus began from the time when Jesus went with his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. So, um, from that moment, we find no evidence of God helping Jesus anymore. Jesus was doing everything on his own now. He was struggling everything on his own. So what are the evidence of God forsaking him? If we think about this, we can think few evidences here. The first one is not responding to Prayers to the end. 
we don't find God responding to Jesus' prayer to the end. Now, I'm not saying that uh, this is evidence of God forsaking you. Prayers doesn't seem to be answered doesn't mean that God has forsaken me. No matter how long it may take. In our cases, it may not be. But in Jesus' case, it was. So, uh, when it comes to prayer, uh, we have heard that prayer is not we trying to make God do what we want. It is we, who, we trying to make ourselves surrender to the will of God. That is prayer. And in that sense, Jesus was Jesus had a victory in his prayer. He went in three times to pray. And in these three prayers, he was struggling uh, to have the victory. And that victory is surrendering to the will of God. And another uh, evidence is that uh, from the time Jesus, uh, anyway, from that time, everything is against Jesus. He was arrested, and from that time, God did not help Jesus at all. When the whole fury of the kingdom of darkness was unleashed against Jesus, till the moment of his death on the cross, God had already turned his face away from his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Now, thinking of this, you know, the most painful thing for Jesus was being forsaken by his father. And why was this necessary? Definitely it was necessary. That's why God did. It was for our acceptance. Now, Jesus was forsaken so that we may be accepted by God. So this is one of the divine exchanges that took place. So this is one point that I want to share. And another, another point that I want to share is that Satan tried his best to dissuade Jesus from going to the cross. Not that Satan loved Jesus or he was concerned about Jesus, but because Satan knew the significance of Jesus going to the cross, Jesus dying on the cross. And that significance is Satan's defeat. Jesus' death on the cross means Satan's defeat. You know, God's way is so strange. Our way, how to have victory over our enemy. Our way is to kill the enemy. But God's way is giving his own life on the cross. Actually, we need to think deeply about this matter. We need to think, we need to dig deeper into this truth. If we want to experience the, to, if we want to live victorious life over the power of darkness, because the same principle, the same principle of victory applies for the believers also. It is not killing our enemy, it is dying to ourselves. And this is one side of spiritual life which most believers have not explored much. So this is the thoughts that I want to share before we focus, go to the focus of our today's message. Now, uh, if we look at today's passage, verse 28 and 29, we, we read that later, knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And verse 30 says, when he had received the drink, he said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 
So now Jesus knew that knowing that all was now completed. Now what is this all? He said it is finished. Now what is this it? What is all and what is it? Which is completed or which is finished? We already, we all have already a certain understanding and certain knowledge of what Christ has achieved for us. So, the accomplishment of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Christ, should be a topic which is uh, our, which should be our main uh, interest should be a wonderful topic for us which we want to know so uh, the point is where is the appreciation for the accomplishment of Christ so uh, today's topic is today's message is that we may have uh, more appreciation for Christ's accomplishment. So I want to start off with this uh, this topic with a short meditation from Romans chapter 4 verse 5. So uh, what Jesus has done, what he has accomplished. So Romans chapter 4 verse 5 talks about what is called justification. Justification is one of the things that has been completed there are many other things but in this verse Romans chapter 4 verse 5 we study about justification and what is included in this justification that I want to uh, meditate shortly and it says Romans chapter 4 verse 5 However, to the man who does not work, but trust God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. Now the process of justification involves two process, two things. So I have one chart to uh, illustrate this. Here justification it it includes two actions done by God so the first one is declared not guilty which means God is the God who justifies the wicked so justifying the wicked means the wicked person is declared not guilty that is just justified the wicked so that is not all now Credited righteousness is the next. So, after de not uh, after declaring not guilty, the next thing done was credited righteousness. His faith is credited as righteousness. So we can divide this justification into two parts. So, declared not guilty is matter of forgiveness of sin, and credited righteousness is matter of inheritance of the same so this left side is we can think like this from in a scale of minus zero plus so minus to zero and right side is zero to plus so it's not just uh, it's not just enough to to be just forgiven of our sins only so sin the, uh, a wicked person is like a debtor who who owed billions of rupees as a debt which we are incapable of uh, repay, repaying. So what God has done is He made our debt from billions to zero. That's what He has done. But not that's not all. God's work of justification is that is not all. If we are just forgiven sinner, but a poor man, a forgiven debtor, but a poor man, that is not what God has done. 
after making our debt to zero, he has uh, credited wealth, riches to us, which is in the form of inheritance of the same. That is zero to plus. So this is the chart to explain these things. So we can think from this angle. Romans chapter 4, verse 5. So <clears throat> the point is, we are not just a forgiven debtors who are poor. We are forgiven our debts as well as we are made rich. That is what has taken place in the process of justification. And how rich we are also actually revealed in the word of God. Many believers do not know how rich we are. And to really know that how rich we are will be too surprised. To, say, to even say that we are billionaires or trillionaires would be an understatement according to what the Bible says, how rich we are. So in that way, we can see, we can see how, how much appreciation we can do about what Christ has done for us. Uh, one more interesting thing is to approach from the angle of a difference between Old Testament and New Testament. So, what difference has Christ's accomplishment made between Old Testament and New Testament era? So, that is another angle of uh, looking at what Christ has done, what he has accomplished. In John chapter 1, we, we read that John the Baptist came from the wilderness crying out, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He said that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So now the difference is, difference is that in the Old Testament, sins are covered, not taken away, because the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins, since animal blood cannot take away sins. So those sacrifices were just an annual reminder that sin is there. That is what the book of Hebrews told us. Animal sacrifices do not take away sin. They are just annual reminder that sin is there. But Jesus is the Lamb of God. He, His blood has effectively taken away our sin. So that is the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. So we, if, if we uh, use our contemporary technology, uh, terminology, we can say that in the Old Testament, people use credit card. And in the New Testament, we use debit card. And when we spend, we don't have to pay back. That is, that is the meaning. So, that is the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. So, uh, and um, now, what does the Bible say about the believer's riches? There are, there are some few very, very, very clear verses which explains about believer's riches. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 says, in this verse, Apostle Paul prayed. His prayer is that the eyes of your heart may be open so that you may know the hope to which we are called and to be able to see the riches of his glorious inheritance in the same. So this verse says that we have glorious inheritance as saints in God. And Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 says that it used the term unsearchable riches of Christ. Our riches in Christ is unsearchable. Means 
you we we cannot really it'll take a lifetime to really find out the full thing about our history and if we look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 it says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm means we are already blessed with every blessing that we will ever need in this life as well as the life to come so these riches this blessing are called spiritual so now let's not be sad with this word spiritual uh, because spiritual blessing means is greater than material blessing and the spirit the greater includes the lesser so if you have the spiritual blessing we have everything and this believers riches is our present reality not our future reality is a present reality and which we should be uh, enjoying today it is not like a promise as in the case of Abraham, we don't have to wait till we die to access this spiritual blessing. Right now, today, we can access and enjoy this wonderful blessings of God. So what are our unsearchable riches? What are these unsearchable riches? Uh, it's not within our, the scope of our today's message to deal with this what are those unsearchable riches but uh, i just hope that uh, today's message will uh, will ignite an interest in each one of us to have that uh, excitement to search for our riches we may start on our treasure hunt that is the hope there is this uh, general lack of interest or appreciation for what Christ has done, for what Christ has accomplished. This is very sad. Uh, reasons, reasons for this lack of appreciation, lack of interest, uh, may be uh, uh, clearly mentioned by Apostle Paul. He said that it is because the eyes of our heart are not open that's why he prayed he shared his prayer topic that the eyes of your heart may be open to see and another reason could be our obsession for material wealth that can also affect our spiritual desire now one interesting information is that According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, this topic of our salvation that Christ has accomplished, the topic of all these wonderful things that Christ has done, is a topic which even angels long to look into these things. And prophets of all search intently and with greatest care. That's what uh, Peter chapter 1 verse 10 to 12 says. So, uh, if angels long to look into these things, why aren't we interested? That is very interesting thing. And one of the things that uh, we need to understand is that one of the things that makes it easy for Satan to steal from us is not knowing what belongs to us. So in that case, you know, we won't even mind if it was stolen from us. That's why Satan can have his heyday stealing from the believers. So, um, so what is important, so important for us is to know what belongs to us, 
what are our riches in Christ? Mm. <clears throat> now, Satan is going to do all he can uh, to stop you from embarking on your treasure hunt. On our journey to find our riches, he is going to do everything he can to stop you. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, there is one interesting verse where God said to the Israelite people, God said to them, As for me, I have given you this land, the land, but Shihon, king of Hezbon, will resist your inheriting. So contend with him in battle. This was God's advice to the Israelites. So here, Sihon, king of Hezbon, is nothing other than Satan himself. Satan is going to resist your inheriting, your inheritance. So contend with him in battle. That's what God said, warned the Israelite people. So actually, when I think about it, you know, Jet CFD is one of the churches which believes and preaches healing. Now, healing is one of the one of our inheritance. Divine health and healing, one of our inheritance, unsearchable riches. Now, Jet CFD is believing and preaching. That's why I feel that Satan. Satan is uh, assaulting in the form of Sister Pusha's sickness and Brother Satwingam's sickness also. Now, we need to understand this. We need to perceive this, Satan's war. Now, what Satan is saying is, see what you can do. Still believe it. Still believe in healing. Now Satan is saying, what will you say? What will we say? So, uh, in this fierce attack of Satan, we need to be aggressive as individuals as well as as collective. Let us fight for healing in our church. So, let's all of us Let's all of us participate in prayers together for Sister Pusa and Brother Satwinga. So, uh, let's not give in to Satan's tricks and his ways. So, um, personally, uh, I also Remember when I started uh, preaching, when I started believing and preaching about healing. That time, Satan also came upon me in different, different ways. And he started to go against me. So, uh, when I started preaching on healing, I started to experience all sorts of physical problems in my body, uh, weaknesses, bloating, uh, physical problems, and then even uh, I had uh, excruciating uh, pain on my shoulder that one whole month I could not move my, my hand, it was too painful. So, um, so all these kind of evidence Satan is just bringing and then he wants to he wants us to give up on this faith so it was actually you know one thing we, one thing interesting is that sometimes God helps us to reach the extremity of hopelessness for us to be desperate enough to start uh, seeking our inheritance. That's why 
many times we come across difficult circumstances and that time God also allows us to go through those things. So Sister Pusa and Brother Sasuingam Signet is just one of these things. Let's not give in to Satan's way. Now, <clears throat> I want to uh, share one thing. Personally, I'm not so confident about uh, healing other people, but when it comes to my own sickness, I'm very, very aggressive. And I command, I claim over divine health, I command over my sickness, I pr uh, pronounce uh, healing, I went for exercise, etc. So, these uh, past four years, I have, uh, it has been a gradual uh, increase, gradual uh, increase in my experience of divine health. So, as I used to share, I uh, prayed for sick people, but whenever I prayed, instead of getting well, they pass away. So, but then I know, I know one thing is that uh, Satan will come against us on this faith, the faith for healing. So, I'm not so confident about healing other people, as I said, but on the personal level, I have been gaining victory every time. So I want all of us, at least on personal level, let us uh, stop enduring. Rather, let us go aggressively forward on this faith. Sometimes I feel, you know, I feel that God is telling me, listen, don't heal people. Teach them how to heal themselves. Maybe it could be correct also. I don't know. But very plausible idea. So let us, uh, uh, no matter what, no matter what Satan does to us, let us go forward. Uh, I was talking about uh, healing, but this is not, not the only thing. We have unsearchable riches of Christ. We have wisdom, divine power, angelic protection, promise, word of God. Even earth also mentioned. You know, God said, I will give you the earth as your inheritance. So many things are there. So, and also, uh, it will take a lifetime to search and discover our unsearchable riches in Christ. So today's message is just an introduction of the importance of appreciation of Christ's accomplishment. So just hoping that this will ignite interest in finding out what belongs to us. And let us all go on a journey of finding out what belongs to us. Embarking on treasure hunt. So, uh, just like the angels who are interested to know that much desire we also may have. So, let's look to God in prayer. Father, thank you Lord for granting us this beautiful day and opportunity to meditate about our Lord Jesus Christ, His accomplishment. Father, bless us so that we may uh, gain an interest in finding out our riches and uh, we may not be plundered by our enemy, Satan. We, we may not, uh, we may stop him from healing from us. And help us to uh, 
be aware about the devil's scheme, and we may uh, live. We may we, we may also know the secret of victory in our spiritual life. Bless each one of us. All these things in Jesus' name. And prayer. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for encouraging us from the Word of God. I believe that all of us are tremendously blessed, and may God continue to bless you. And now may I call upon Pastor Caleb to lead us into Lord's Supper. Now it's time for us to receive the Lord's Supper together. And even as we are celebrating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, it sounds like a misnomer to celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But that is the very purpose for which Jesus came, to die for you and for me, for your sins and for my sins, to die as you and me, so that you and me, we can be forgiven and we can have this new life in Christ Jesus. And that's the reason why Jesus came. And that's the reason why we celebrate this Lord's table together. And please be prepared with your elements, the bread and the cup. Let me read from the Word of God from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 onwards. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it, eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take, take this and divide it among yourself. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and he broke it. And <clears throat> he gave thanks for them, saying, this is my body that was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So when Jesus died on the cross, his blood was shed on the cross to give us this new covenant in his blood. And the writer of Hebrews says that the covenant or the testament or the will is inaugurated when the writer of the will dies. And the writer of the will is God himself, Jesus Christ. One of the Godheads, he died on the cross. And that is the beginning of this new covenant or the new testament that's what the writer of hebrews clearly underlines for us and therefore we celebrate this new covenant wherein god is no longer angry with your sins and my sins because jesus took all of your sins and my sins upon his body and he became sin for you and for me at the cross and all the anger and wrath of God because of sin fell upon Jesus instead of upon you and me and that is what we celebrate as we partake of the Lord's Supper together because of the grace of God because of his love for you and for me he made a provision to take your place and my place and the divine justice was accomplished, it is finished, it is done, and now you are free to live your life as a child of God. And that is what Good Friday accomplished for us, to bring us the new covenant, the new testament, where God says, 
your sins and your lawless deeds, I will remember no more. And that is one of the most important clauses of the new covenant. Therefore, know that God is not angry with your sins if you have put your faith and trust in that one sacrifice of Jesus Christ at the cross. Now you can live your life in freedom, knowing that God is not after you and your sins, but He is for you because you have become a new creation. You have become His child. And that's what we celebrate together as we partake of this Lord's Supper. So, let me pray for the bread and also the cup and we shall partake of the bread and the cup together. Shall we look to God in prayer? Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for us at the cross. And your word says that by his stripes we were healed. And we receive this provision of healing even as we partake of your body, your broken body for us. And thank you for the cup. Your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary brought us the new covenant where you have completely taken our sins away from us and forgiven us and made us clean by the blood of Jesus Christ and made us perfect forever. And we give thanks to you for this gift of righteousness that you have given to us through the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we thanks and we pray. Amen. Let's partake of the bread and the cup together. Now it's time for us to receive the benediction. Shall we all look to God in prayer? Father, we thank you for your son Jesus Christ who came and died for us at the cross so that all our sins can be taken away from us so that we can be declared right before you forever. We give thanks to you for this act of kindness that you accomplished for us at the cross of Calvary. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Caleb, and thank you everyone for joining with us. Looking forward to see you on Easter Sunday. We will be live in Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Have a great week.